Why are you here this morning? You know, Jesus asked those who were listening concerning about going out to see John. He said, what did you go out in the wilderness to see? And so they uh, were thinking about this, that, and the other. Why they were, and so Jesus was asking them, did you go out to see a prophet? Did you go out to see the reeds blowing in the wind? What did you go out to see? And they said, a prophet, yea, more than a prophet. Or Jesus said that to them, that that's what they went out to see. And so I ask you, why are you here this morning? Why have you come to worship God? Why are you in this assembly here today? It's important as we ask that question because our motives are revealed to God himself. He sees into your heart. He knows why you're here. When I was a child, we always had chores to do. And one of my chores in the wintertime was to bring in buckets of coal for the Stokermatic. And you had to pull the ashes out of there first and take them and empty them out. And then you had to bring in the coal and pour it into the coal bin. And it took four five-gallon buckets to fill that Stokermatic each and every day. Uh, friends, I did not enjoy filling those buckets and lugging them into the house and pouring them into the coal bin and that Stokermatic. But I surely enjoyed the warmth that we had from that Stokermatic. And so if it, the coal was not brought in, the fire would go out and the house would grow cold. So there was a purpose, there was a reason for those buckets of coal to be brought in. What if this lady and her sons in 2 Kings here had only gotten one or two vessels? That's all we have. We're not, they're not, that's enough. That's all we need. The Bible doesn't say that. It says that they got many vessels, not a few. And so it was that they brought those to fill those up, and they were able to have what they needed to pay the creditors to stop her sons from going into the uh, slavery. And they were able to have the oil for themselves, what they needed to live on. And so there were many vessels that were brought and filled by this miracle that took place friends you and I we need to be filled with the word of God in John chapter 15 verses 10 and 11 Jesus said there if you keep my commandments you will abide in my love just as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love and then in verse number 11 there it says that I have spoken these things unto you that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. Notice that he wanted their joy to be full. And so if you have come here to be filled, did you bring any vessels? Did you bring your bucket? You know, there are some who come and they don't bring their bucket. I invite you to open up to John chapter 4 with me. John chapter 4, beginning in verse number 9. John 4, beginning in verse 9. You remember the Samaritan woman who came to the well and Jesus was sitting there? And so the woman of Samaria said to Jesus, How is it that you, being a Jew, ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? And the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with. Jesus came to the well without a bucket. But he had a water himself that he didn't need a bucket to carry it away with. And so he's telling this woman, if you knew, friends, if we know Jesus today, then we're going to be sure that we bring our vessels to be filled. Because this is a time when Christians prepare themselves to the week ahead. To face all that's going to come upon us, and it doesn't matter what that might be, we want to make sure that we're prepared for whatever comes. 
And in order to do that, we need to be filled. We need to be filled with the things of God. And Jesus here is talking to this lady, if you had known me, if you had known who it is that's speaking to you, you would have asked me for the water. She asked in verse 12, Are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us the well and drank from it himself as well as the sons and his livestock? And so she's thinking in physical terms. She's saying, well, You're greater than this great uh, one who was before us, our patriarch. She still didn't know who she was talking to. She didn't know. Jesus answered and said to her, Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst, but the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. And the woman said to him, Sir, give me this water that I may not thirst nor come here to draw. Friends, how, why are you here? Have you come to feel that thirst? You know, there are some people who come to the assembly not expecting to be filled. There are some who don't know Jesus and they don't expect that the church is going to provide anything of value to them so they don't bring their bucket. That They don't come expecting to receive anything. And friends, most of the time, those who come expecting not to receive anything leave having not received anything. So I ask again, why are you here? What's the reason? What's the purpose that you have come to the assembly this morning? There are others who, it's been a habit. And you know, it's just a habit here. I come, my parents brought me when I was young, and it's expected of me. And if I didn't show up, you know, one of the elders might give me a call. Somebody might visit. And uh, so I just feel an obligation to come. And I'm not really coming for the spiritual food. I'm just coming to show up. But I'm not bringing my bucket. I'm not going to do that. There are other reasons that people come to the assembly. And yet, they do not leave with anything of value. It happens. But friends, why are you here today? What is the purpose of you coming in this way? Now, open your Bibles with me to John chapter 8, please. John chapter 8. Because there are people who bring their buckets. I brought mine. You see here, it says on their spiritual bucket. Spiritual bucket. And so I came because I'm expecting to receive something of value that I can carry back. That's going to help me in my life from here forward. And so I want that and I want to be sure that I've got something that will help me do that. Well look at this in verse number 31. John 8 verse 31. Jesus uh, there, let's begin in verse 30. He spoke these words... Many believed in him. The truth, uh, as he spoke these words, many believed in him. There were many that did that. And then Jesus said to those Jews who believed in him. Now remember, they're coming. They're looking for something. And so they brought their buckets with them. And so now Jesus is going to begin to fill their bucket. And he says to them, if you abide in my word, uh, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Friends, you and I cherish those words, don't we? Because we want to be free from sin, free from the bondage of Satan, and we want to have that freedom that is in Jesus. But these Jews who were hearing this, notice their response in verse 33. They answered him, we are Abraham's descendants and have never been in bondage to anyone. How can you say you will be made free? You know what they did? They said, uh, you're going to talk like that. You know what we're going to do? We're going to sit on our bucket. How much spiritual food can go in the bucket when it's turned over and they're sitting on it? I don't like the preacher. 
I don't like the teacher. I don't like the message, the topic that's been chosen. And you know what? This is offensive to me. And so I'm just going to refuse anything else that's said. Well, that's what's going on here. That very thing is happening. Now remember, these were Jews that believed in him. But when he said, you shall be made free, they said, wait a minute, we've not been in bondage to anyone. What do you mean that we can be made free? And so they rejected that. If you drop on down to verse 48, the Jews answered him and said, Did we not rightly say that you are a Samaritan and have a demon? You see, now it's not just that they're turning their bucket over and refusing to hear. Now they're going to stand on their bucket. I'm not going to stand on this one for obvious reasons. I don't want to land down here. But you see what they're doing because he said the truth shall make you free. And they said, wait a minute, we're not in bondage to anyone. They said, guess what? We think you have a demon. And so they went from just sitting on their bucket to accusing Jesus falsely. And then in verse 59, then they took up stones to throw at him. I just don't like the church of Christ. Have you heard anyone say that? I don't believe. uh, Sometimes they're referred to as Campbellites, uh, water dogs. Have you ever heard that? I have. I have. And they, if they thought it would be permissible, would cast stones. Some bring a bucket, but when they hear what's going on or find out the topic or whatever, they turn it over and say, I'm not receiving any of this. I'm not carrying this home with me. And so it is that they leave not having their buckets filled. Not having it filled with anything. (laughs) Then there are others who come and bring their bucket. Back up to chapter 6, please. John chapter 6. And these Jews were listening to Jesus and they wanted this bread from heaven. They wanted to be filled with what Jesus was talking about. But now remember, they too, like the Samaritan woman, they were thinking in physical terms. That manna, they thought about Moses. Moses gave us manna in the wilderness, they said. And here, we want this manna as well. Beginning in verse 32... Jesus began filling their buckets with these words. He said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, Moses did not give you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Then they said to him, Lord, give us this bread always. Friends, they had their buckets and they were ready. Give it to us. We want it. And friends, there are some who come to the assembly and they hear words about grace. We love grace. Friends, without the grace of God, we cannot be saved. And so we want grace. We want our buckets to be filled with those things. And then maybe the topic of mercy is brought up. Yes, oh man, without the mercy of God, who could go to heaven? I couldn't. But because of His mercy, I'm able to do that. And so yes, I want that in my bucket. Please fill it up. And then of course, we talk about the hope. That hope that anchors our souls in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 18 and 19. That will not fail. That hope that gives us reason to keep going, right? It it helps us to live in this old world waiting for that reward when Jesus comes again. So yes, please give me that hope. Put it in my bucket. Let me carry it with me. And then 1 Corinthians 13, 13, now abide faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. And friends, I spoke about the warmness and the love that we received uh, coming here again. 
It warms your heart. And so, yes, we want that love. Please, preacher, tell me more about love and how God sent His Son because He loves me. John 3, 16. And so it is that we want these things in our buckets. Remember that these people here, these Jews said, give us this bread always. And so Jesus was giving it to them. But drop on down to verse number 60. John 6, verse 60. Therefore many of his disciples, when they heard this, said, this is a hard saying, who can understand it? Who can understand it? He was telling them about the bread. It was a spiritual bread, but they were still thinking about physical bread. And Jesus said, if you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you'll have eternal life. But they said, no, that's too hard for us. That we can't understand what this man is talking out of his head. That was some of the comments. But they said, we can't understand it. What's going on? And then, look down at verse 66. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. Well, friends, we want our buckets filled with grace, mercy, hope, and love. Well, friends, when it, we start talking about repentance. Repent. Do we want that in our bucket? Uh, now wait a minute, you're stepping on my toes. You know, uh, Brenda Maynard uh, at Forest Park, uh, Susan, Bobby, y'all know Brenda. She's told me one time, said, uh, Preacher, I like it when you step on my toes. And I said, well, I was aiming higher. Aiming higher. What about rebuking? How many of us enjoy being rebuked? Really? And yet, isn't this part of the message of Jesus? Didn't He come teaching and preaching, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand? Didn't He tell Paul in 2 Timothy 4, verse number 2, that we are to uh, exhort or to preach, be instant in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all long suffering? Isn't rebuke part of God's message? And so, friends, we, we think about that. And then, well, preacher, you, you're going to meddling now. You mean I got to do something? You, you mean that the word servant doesn't mean just coming and sitting in the pew? Friends, we are the servants of God. And if His servants are not serving, who will get the work done? Well, the preacher will do it, right? The elders, oh, that's why we got them, because they're the best servants, and so we'll just leave it to them. And you know that phrase, the name of that one that uh, gets the most put on him? Well, somebody will do it. Who here is named somebody? Well, preacher, you know, you done quit preaching the good news, and you've gone to meddling, and so you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to... But what happened? The love, the mercy, the hope, the grace fell out too. Friends, people like to pick and choose what goes into their spiritual bucket. But who is it that has decided what needs to go into our spiritual buckets? Do we pick and choose like some buffet? Or like Paul said in Acts chapter 20, I have not shunned to declare unto you the whole counsel of God. And friends, is it not the whole counsel of God that we need to build us up, to fill our buckets, to make sure that our joy in Jesus is up to the maximum? Isn't that what we need? But sometimes... Our buckets get full of other things. I want you to think about this. You know, we, we get busy with our sports, and that goes in the bucket. Uh, we're, we're busy with our dreams, our dreams. We're chasing our dreams. And, and that 
is in the spiritual bucket. Uh, maybe it's gardening. Anybody here love gardening? Uh, there's nothing wrong with doing some gardening, is there? But when gardening replaces God's work, it becomes a problem, right? But, you know, that, that's in our bucket there. And uh, maybe work. Is work taking too much of your time and you don't have time to fill your spiritual bucket? Is it uh, working a lot of overtime and uh, all these different things and so I don't have time for the spiritual things? Maybe you enjoy reading. This is Harry Potter. And and so we spend a lot of time reading and... uh, or, or maybe it's watching DVDs, you know, and those kind of things. And uh, young people, Switch, Nintendo, uh, that goes in, and uh, iPads, and what's that? How much time are we spending on Facebook or other social media giving our opinions and thoughts about things? as opposed to the Word of God. How much time are we spending in frivolous, non-salvation, non-spiritual things as compared to our time with God? And yet our bucket becomes full. And you know, when our bucket becomes full, what happens when we try to put grace in there what happens when we try to put mercy in there what happens when we try to put hope in there do you see what happens our bucket's already full of things that are not important concerning your salvation and so sometimes what we need to do is to empty our bucket of frivolous things. But, but I love it. I love my sports. I love my hobbies. I love uh, these other things. And you know, my work needs me. Does God need you? Does the Lord need you? And so, friends, we got to think about that and make sure that we're following after the right way, doing those things that God would have us to do and not doing the things that the world wants us to do. These Jews in chapter 6, they took their bucket and left. They said, we're not going to listen. we got other things that we're going to pay attention to. And so it is, they left. It says that they walked with him no more. And Jesus turned to the other disciples there, his twelve, and said, Do you also want to go away? And Peter answered, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. What do you want your bucket filled with? With the frivolous things of the world or do you want it filled with the spiritual things of God? The things that lead to eternal life. Why are you here today? Why are you here? Friends, we need to think about that and consider these things because sometimes our lives are too full of stuff. Stuff that's not important concerning our eternal destiny. And we need to reevaluate. We need to examine ourselves, 1 Corinthians 13 or 2 Corinthians 13, 5. Make sure that our life is following what Jesus would have us to do and not fall short in that way. In Luke 8, 14, Now the ones that fell among the thorns are those who, when they heard, go out and are choked with the cares of the world. Riches and pleasures of life and bring no fruit to maturity. And so Jesus spoke about that. You remember the rich young ruler in Mark chapter 10? What must I do to inherit eternal life? Keep the commandments. Well, I've done that. Well, there's one more thing you need to do. You need to get rid of your stuff. Give to the poor. 
and come and follow me. That was Jesus' wisdom to that rich young ruler. What advice would he give to us today? What wisdom would he put in your spiritual bucket today? What is it in your life that you need to re-examine and make yourself what God would have you to be, what Jesus wants you to be? You remember Psalm 119, verse 11? David said, your word I've hidden in my heart. We might paraphrase that and say, your word I have filled my bucket with that I might not sin against you. In Psalm 23, his cup was running over because of the blessings of God. And so Psalm 119, he wanted his bucket filled with the word of God. You read in there, out of those 170 verses, 167 mention, give me your word, teach me your statutes, I love your commandments. He wanted his bucket filled. Teach me your statutes. That's what he asked over and over and over again. And so, as true disciples of Jesus, John 8, 31, we abide in his word. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Friends, let me ask you. If you knew that the preaching every Sunday was going to give you that everlasting spring of water that comes from Jesus so that you would never thirst again, how many spiritual buckets would you bring? Remember the widow? Go and fetch those vessels, not a few, And they brought them and brought them and brought them till finally they said, that's all there is. That's all there is. Because friends, we need our buckets. We need them filled with all of these things. With the love of God. We need them filled with the mercy of God. We need them filled with the hope that is in there. The grace. But also we need the rebuke. We need the reproving. We need... Lessons about working. And friends, when you think about that, we got to keep filling our buckets with the Word of God. <clears throat> Daily. Filling my bucket with the Word of God. Because remember, in John chapter 15, verse 10, if you keep my commandments... You will abide in my love. Just as I have kept the Father's commandments and abide in His love. And then that verse 11 again. I have spoken these things to you that my joy may remain in you. How many of you want to be filled with the joy of Jesus? And then he concludes verse 11 by saying, And that your joy may be full. Friends, there's a connection between our being filled with the Word of God and following that Word and the joy that is eternal. The joy that comes from Jesus. The joy that comes from God. And that joy the devil cannot take away no matter what comes to you in this life. What are you going to leave here today with? What are you going to go out the door And carry with you the rest of this week, the rest of your life. Is it a joy that comes from Jesus? A joy that you know is cannot be taken away. Friends, you can have that today if you have not yet believed that Jesus is the Son of God. If you've not yet repented of your sins. If you've not yet confessed His name before others if you've not yet been baptized into Jesus Christ? Is there anything more important today that you need to do than that? Anything at all? Or maybe you've done that and yet the old devil has distracted you. The old devil has caused you to leave your spiritual bucket and to follow after the pleasures of the world. 
what pleasure or what temptation of Satan is worth you leaving this building today and not making your heart right with Jesus? Is there anything worth it? You have to make that choice. God leaves it in your hands. But know this, that you'll be held accountable for that choice. This may be the last time that you get that choice put before you. If we can be of help to you in any way, please come to the front while we stand and sing.